Hello and welcome to Lawrence Plays for a new series which we've decided to call Flavours of Factorio. And this series is all about various different recipes in Factorio which can be done in very, very different ways depending on exactly how you want to play the game. And the first one of those, these we're going to look at is the Vulcanite processing in Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 because we find that in a lot of the mods tend to have more complex recipes. So when you're processing Vulcanite, you start off with the Vulcanite ore that you dig up out of the ground. You then pulverise that in a, in a pulveriser, and that produces a bit of stone, some crushed vulcanite, and a small chance of getting some enriched vulcanite as well. These you can then process a bit further, so you can you can then enrich it by uh, taking in some sulphur, some of the crushed and some of the enriched, and that produces more enriched and less crushed. So you'd essentially here you're turning six crushed into three enriched vulcanite, and you're producing some sand as well. So this allows you to increase the amount of the enriched vulcanite you've got. And this is important because you then need to combine crushed vulcanite, enriched vulcanite, and with some water and some petroleum gas as well to get the vulcanite blocks, which is the things you actually want for later on in the system. So here we have these th these three steps going in here. We're doing the pulverizing, we're doing the enrichment, and we're doing the, t the uh, cooking it into the blocks. And for the moment, we're going to concentrate on the enrichment step because that is the interesting one. Because as you can see here, this this is a loopback recipe, which means it's taking in both crushed and enriched, now putting crushed and enriched, and you then have to handle that somehow and make sure everything goes through appropriately. The other recipes are pretty straightforward. You take in a resource, you output some stuff. There's no sort of funny loopbacks or anything like that. So these these are simple and standard. So what we've done is the four of us have each designed our own vulcanite processing system completely independently, and I'm now going to have a look at them all and tell you what the, how they um, how how they differ and what's uh, and how they work. So we're going to start off by looking at mine because it's my channel and and uh, this is the one I'm most familiar with. This is actually the, the assembly I've put together in our uh, space exploration and Crastorio 2 run through. So if you're watching the series, it'll probably look very very familiar to you. So. The um, the vulcanite, all, all the vulcanites, both both the enriched and the crushed, go into the go in from the pulverizers into this warehouse here. This then accumulates them. We get a certain amount in there, and then they're both being output over here onto this belt. And this one will run basically until there's more than a th so, uh, until there's a thousand enriched vulcanite in the chest. At which point we reckon we've probably got enough, and it's okay to stop. But the rest, otherwise, other than that, it will just keep flowing and keep flowing. A steady stream of crushed will come out. A steady stream of enriched will come out, and then over here those can be processed. Processing then outputs the uh, the enriched and the crushed in a slightly more helpful ratio. So we get about about 50. I think it is actually 50-50 of each, and occasional blobs of sand. And the vulcanite is then passed back into the into the warehouse here, where it can flow around the system again. So, in order to keep this running, we need to make sure that we always have a supply of the enriched vulcanite and always a supply of the crushed vulcanite. The crushed vulcanite basically comes out of the uh, pulverizers up here. We're, ne we're almost certainly no not going to run out because most of what comes out of here is going to be the crushed stuff. So we don't. I'm not too worried about that. But the enriched, we need to make sure it goes around this loop um, repeatedly and doesn't just get passed on to the next step. So in order to make sure we pass things around in, uh, at the correct time, we've got another cable going going from the warehouse to these two uh, pieces of belt here. And as you can see by the way this is dribbling through, this isn't running all the time. So over here we've got we've got this we're telling this only to run when there's more than 500 Vulcan, enriched vulcanite in this warehouse. And that means that it'll make sure there's always a decent amount in here to use for the um, for the continuing the enrichment process. Um, but whenever there's a bit of excess because we've been producing more and it's been flowing in from this belt, we can then output a bit more of it. And if I mouse over the uh, warehouse, you can see over there on the right, the, no the, amount of the amount of enriched vulcanite is hovering more or less around 500. So that's, that's working nicely. We're not, losing it. We're not losing any of it. We then also have the, the other belt. And this one runs where as long as crushed vulcanite is greater than 1,000. And again, that's, that's to make sure that we don't end up with all the crushed vulcanite flowing straight down here. That shouldn't happen. It seems like a pretty unlikely problem to have. But, you know, just in case, we've got that, we've got that there to solve it. The only problem I can see this system potentially running into, well, there, no, that's right. There are two problems I can potentially see this system running into. One is that if, if we, uh, if this system backs up because perhaps we have enough enough of the um, enrich, en enough of the vulcanite blocks, so we don't, so this, is, so these belts back up along here. Eventually, this system could turn all of the uh, crushed vulcanite into enriched vulcanite, and then potentially, I, I could see it maybe ending up in a silly position where there isn't enough, um, where there isn't enough. Uh, crushed vulcanite to allow us to pull out some enriched vulcanite to allow the system to start to, sort of, to get back in, into a state where it allows crushed vulcanite to flow around. I think this is very unlikely, but it is possible, which is why this is set to stop if uh, when the um, uh, when this gets over a thousand. 
The other possibility is, and again, I haven't really tested, is what happens when enormous amounts of crushed vulcanite flow into this warehouse and it fills up completely. Now, I don't expect that to be a problem because we've, we're always going to have at least some enriched vulcanite in here that can then flow out wherever it's needed. So I think this should be absolutely fine. So yes, this is my design. We've got a warehouse here to do all of the sorting of the uh, of all of the um, intermediates. But other than that, it's just take, send, sending out the ingredients out this way, bring them all back in again here, and then just trying to keep a sensible amount in the warehouse. <clears throat> the next one we're going to look at over here is Mark's design. And we're looking at this one next because it sort of starts out in a fairly similar way. Again, well, all of them are going to have the pulverizing at the beginning and the cooking at the end. But what Mark has done slightly differently here is, whilst he's also using a warehouse to do all of the sorting, He's then he's not doing a loop back with any back to this main warehouse at the beginning. So here, now the system has got bootstrapped and we've got every, and everything is running. We're just chucking all of the, any enriched vulcanite that does come through from the pulverizing stage. It's just flowing down the middle and being passed straight off to the output. So we don't we're not we're not too interested in that. The crushed vulcanite is coming down here along with the sulfur, and is being loaded. Uh, okay, so the sulfur is being loaded in by these these long handled inserters here. The, um, in, the inserter here is running whenever there's less than 40 in the chest, so this is trying to keep this chest at about at least at at least 40. But it will then be passed from there into the into the centrifuge to be processed, and then any of the crushed will be passed back out of this chest to be passed back round and go in again. So what Mark's done here that's different uh, on, for, on a conceptual level is that he's got the, the crushed vulcanite flowing round and round in a circle here, rather than being passed back to the initial warehouse over here and then coming back out again. And I'm going to zoom in slightly because that's really flickery. Um, so, so instead of being passed back on, an, on another belt, it's going round and round in the same loop here. And he's doing the same with the enriched vulcanite as well. So we've got out here, we're passing out the sand and the enriched vulcanite into this chest. Um, we can also load up the uh, chest from here as long as, it, whenever, there's, whenever there's none in, whenever there's none in here, it'll, it'll, it'll pull some off here. That's just to get it started. But when it's actually running, We'll pass the pass it round straight all the the um, the sand and the enriched vulcanite back into this chest, where we have a supply of it gradually building up. And that can then be passed through back into the centrifuge. So again, it's the uh, the enriched vulcanite is just going round and round and round, rather than being passed back off to a central storage point. It's just kept in the same area. What we do have here is we then have another inserter, and this one's set up so whenever there's more than 15 enriched vulcanite in this chest, it will empty. And because of the way things fall out, and this has something to do with uh, cunning application of, of um, stack inserter sizes and numbers in here. Um, <laughs> but the idea is the sand will land in this in this stack here, and um, when it when it when any of it becomes available, and then we passed out first. And then once the inserters pass that out, if this uh, because there'll still be more than 15 uh, enriched vulcanite in the chest, it'll then start to unload this and to, to keep this down at about 15. And you'll see, yeah, you'll you'll see that next time this runs, or next time this finishes running. We'll get the enriched vulcanite passed around, and then it dumps the um, it dumps it out onto this onto this belt here, and it gets taken away by the uh, by the belts to be, to go into the output. The big advantage of this system over the one I built is that you don't you don't spe waste some belt space passing ingredients back and forth again. So this one belt, uh, this or rather this half belt of crushed vulcanite, can supply a significantly larger number of these. Um, of these uh, centrifuges and keep them satisfied. So it means it means fewer belts need to be run round. It makes the system a little bit more a little bit more elegant, I think. But it does. But on the flip side, it also makes it a little bit more complicated. It takes it longer to spin up in the first place because it needs to um, the the enriched vulcanite flowing along here needs needs to load up all of these chests before the system can really start working and start exporting any significant amount. So I think it probably takes longer to get running. But in, but in essence, it's doing exactly the same job. The throughput is going to be exactly the same, because for every piece of crushed vulcanite that comes in here, or for every piece of vulcanite that comes in here, a specific number of crushed vulcanite is created, and, there, and, that, and that gets turned into, um, into the enriched vulcanite at, at the same rate in all of these systems. So, so throughput, throughput is always going to be the same, but um, you may find different latencies or different startup times. Over at the end here, we're, he's you, the the excess uh, crushed vulcanite is simply being passed along here. It comes it float, floats flows along here, and any that then isn't needed will be passed out at the end here to come down here and to be made into the blocks. So again, this is working in a slightly different way to the way mine did it, um, where where um, where I he, he's passing it all the way past, past all the machines to see if any of them want it, and if none of them do, then it's passed out at the end. I just kept a stockpile in the warehouse, and whenever it went over the amount that I decided I wanted to stockpile, then I passed it out. Once again, they're both perfectly valid solutions. Um, they they work 
equivalently. Uh, you won't, n neither is more efficient or less efficient than the other, um, because as I said, you're always going to get the same amount, of, the same number of these blocks out at the end for the amount of bulkanite you put in. It's just a slightly different, uh, a slightly different design and way of thinking about it, which is what makes it interesting. So heading back over to the start again, uh, and down here we have Mike's design, and this shares a bit of a, a little bit in common with mine, in that he's got a belt feeding the um, the vulcanite up one side and, and down the other side, but instead of feeding it all into a warehouse to sort it, he's got a cunning system of um, uh, of splitters and with priority set on them. So you can see that down, where is it? So, so we're, we're feeding everything in here. He's got a belt balancer here to make sure the, um, the, the ingredients flow along both sides of the belt. And then here, the crushed vulcanite is being prioritized to go down this side. And the, the, um, the enriched company is being fed down this belt instead. And over here, it's being prioritized to go up this side. So this is ensuring that the, this belt up here uh, will always, we'll always get the crushed and the uh, enriched by priority. And then any overflow will be passed down the belt over here. Now this works. Um, this has basically the same effect as the system I did, but doesn't require a warehouse in the middle of it. So it's um, it's slightly smaller, perhaps a little bit more elegant. Um, it, but it but it works as I say in, in much the same way. And you'll see that he's got the uh, the excess uh, crushed vulcanite is flowing along here. He's got plenty of that. And then as any um, excess uh, enriched vulcanite is made available, it's coming along here and it's being processed. Uh, the the slight risk of this, and I don't think I don't think it's an actual serious danger, but there is a small chance that because he doesn't really have a, a particularly significant buffer here, you could end up if, if all of these machines pulled in lots and lots of Vulcan, enriched vulcanite very very quickly, you could end up with a big gap on this belt. But that wouldn't matter because then the, enri the enriched vulcanite coming down here from the output would flow round here and then would pass onto this side and fill it back up again. So. Yes, this system seems seems nice and stable. I, I, I have no reason to think it to think it won't keep working. It's it's very very as I say very very similar to mine. It has the same slight downside that you've got you're limited on the amount of uh, crush that you can pass in up here uh, <clears throat> because it's only half a belt and some of it comes back round again. But be, but beyond but I don't think that's a particular problem. Uh, if you can just you can pa always parallelize it. You can use faster belts. There are options and ways to get around that. I did also notice that he's got the same sort of thing going on down here, but this system, um, I believe, is this this one is running in the same way that mine did, in that he's using a warehouse. Um, he doesn't have any output limiters on here, so this will always this will just cap carry on running perfectly happily. But over here, he's got a thing saying, well, as um, out, only only, out, only let this belt run if there's more than 50 uh, 50 enriched vulcanite in there, and that seems to be enough to keep the system running because over here, what is it? It's, is it the same amount of both? No, it uses more of the enriched, so that's absolutely fine. You're not you're you're not going to run out on here, um, because if if they both run for an amount of time, the the crushed will travel through much more happily. Now there is a very very small chance that you could run out of crushed in the warehouse, um, but a bit, uh, because there's nothing nothing monitoring that. However, if he did, more would come in very very quickly from over here as soon as he had more vulcanite available. And if he didn't have any available over here, then he'd have other more serious problems to worry about I think so yeah this 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 uh, work, works quite nicely so that's three of the designs number four over here is Tristan's again got the pulverizers on the input and again once again he seems to be doing he's doing the design that uh, the sort of idea basic idea that Mark did where everything is being fed down a belt and it's pulling it pulling in and out as required however the interesting thing that Tristan has done differently and I really I really like the way this looks I think it's very it, 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 it just looks pleasing um, <laughs> is that the um, all of the all of the ingredients for the, for the system are being fed round on these loops here? So he's got he's got an input of sulfur coming in at the bottom middle here uh, for all of them, and an output for the sand at the top. But for the for the things that get looped back, he's got this uh, system here where it passes out the enriched. It goes round here through the splitter and then straight back in again. Um, now I did look at this and I wondered if he'd done something if, if he. I, I thought that these um, inserter priorities seemed a little bit funny, but he says the input priority is required to stop the system jamming up when you've got too much um, too much enriched vulcanite, which seems fair enough. You do need to you do always need to take it away from here, and I could see how it could jam up if you're always if you're trying to prioritise on this side, and you don't need to prioritise on the side that's feeding back into here. Um, because when you spit, when, when, when it, each time this runs, it produces four times as much as it needs to run again. So if 50% of it tries to go this way, you've still got two, and that's more than enough than it needs to run again. So if I, for example, if I come along here, if I, if I, if I grab all the um, enriched vulcanite out of these two, you'll see that when it runs, oops, let's try not just try to fall off things. As it runs, it passes it back round, and we get some coming back in over here. 
and we've also got the stuff coming in from the from over here but um, as well but the idea is that it, it then pulls it around and it's make, making it available to, to, for use next time so once again more importantly on this side you don't need to pull in quite you don't need to pull in all of it you're only pulling in the sort of the, the half that doesn't get reused so you're pulling in six each time rather than ten um, and also I just really like the way these um, these belts curl around I think it looks I think it looks really neat and this gets the feedback in into the system with without needing to worry about any sort of cunning system of, of um, inserters and, and and chests and reading and reading how much how much what the contents is, is of, of all the things so I feel it's it's a little bit neater a little bit more compact and as I say the, the, the loop of the belts uh, really, really appeals to me once all these run, it just it, it runs. They all run in exactly the same way in the end. So then it just passes. It, once again, the um, any excess um, uh, Vulcan, crushed vulcanite is passed out over here, and the produced uh, produced enriched is passed out at the bottom here. And they go in, and, and as ever, they're just turned into blocks. That was a little bit of extra credit stuff. Tristan also looked into um, adding in beacons for the system as well. So over here we've got this is the standard early game beacon that you get, um, and here we've got uh, and, and so with it being there, it's it's got enough range to cover those three uh, centrifuges. So that's a nice, sim ni nice simple design. It's basically the same design here. The only difference is that he's moved these belts up a little bit. So that does mean these feedback loops are a little bit longer, so you'll get a little bit more stored in them. But I don't think that's actually a problem. It, it, the, the system will run uh, run absolutely happily. And once everything's filled up, once again, you get, you're always going to get exactly the same total amount of throughput um, because you've got the same amount of input and it's not a lossy system in any way. So. Yeah, there's no efficiency gains. It's just, it's just. Well, I suppose there could be now because with this system you can start putting um, productivity modules in here um, because you've got a beacon. Um, but yeah, it it, it 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 means it takes a little bit longer to get started and start spitting out the um, the crushed vulcanite at the rate you want it to. But until, but uh, once it's got to that point, and everything is filled up, it'll be just as fast as everything else. Then over here we've got the same sort of thing, but this time we're using a, a wide area beacon, and that's capable of covering all of these. And presumably there's no reason why you couldn't have a mirror image of this on top. Over here you've got an ec you've got a very wide area. Oh, oh, in fact that's exactly what he's done here. Um, I thought this was going to be the even even bigger beacon, but no, this is, this is just the standard wide area beacon. So this allows yes, yeah, this allow this 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 has the range that it can cover all of the um, all of the uh, centrifuges on both sides. Um, without you needing to change the basic design at all. This one's just a, a mirror and a flip on the top, or a f just just vertically flipped and put a put above it, so it works in exactly the same way. So yes, that's a n nice neat system, and yeah, well done for uh, for showing the extra extra changes needed to be made for um, for putting in the beacons. I hadn't really thought about that with mine, and I probably should have. Um, but coming over here, yeah, this would be this would be fairly easy, I think. Uh, let's let's borrow his beacon. Boop. Um, no, actually, I would have to change my design a bit if I wanted to put beacons in here. Uh, there isn't quite room. Although I could remove this um, sand belt along here, or have it run underneath things. Then there'd be room to tuck, tuck the beacons in underneath here, and it would it, they would they would then affect all of these machines. So that yeah, that should should be fairly easy. Uh, Mike's the same. We've got the we've got room on down the side here for his, and ooh, not so not so easy with Marks. Um, I think this might be one that's probably going to want need to wait for the wide area beacons. Because uh, I don't think you're realistically going to get beacons in here without uh, without some major changes, and I don't think you'd be able to make those changes because there's so many inserters feeding out onto the belt up the middle. But to be fair, the design spec did not include um, <laughs> did not include beacons at all. So that's our four different ways of uh, basically four different ways of doing the same job. And what I find quite pleasing is that there are essentially there's there's two way two different ways you can do with this in. in two different ways. Uh, so I'll explain. What I mean is you, you can have the belts running down the side like this and then running and then and an output belt running up the other side, which is what I've done and what Mike's done here. Or you can have looped round feedback, which Mark have done and Tristan have done. And they've done it in different ways, which makes it even more interesting. And also you can either do your balancing in and your, your prioritization using warehouses like I have and Mark has, or you can do it through uh, splitters like Mike has and Tristan has. Okay, Mike did both, but you know, basically, we, 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 if we look at it this way, then it's, it's, it's sort of a pleasing sy symmetry because that means of the four possible combinations of those two things, one of us have done was done each of the four possible combinations. Now you've seen all the designs, which one's your favourite? Do you have another way you'd like to do it? Tell us about it in the comments, or maybe post in a blueprint if you want. And what other processes would you like to see us tackle in the same way? Let me know. So I hope that's been interesting and uh, has given you some ideas for your um, for your up up, up and coming um, Vulcanite processing. You'll also be able to do something fairly similar with uh, with the Coverex system, and I think we'll probably be looking into that in a future episode. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you'll see that video when it pops up. Thank you for watching. Please come along to the streams on a Monday evening, and we'll see you then. Thanks for watching.